Our next presenter is Mr. Laurent Velez. He's from Etsy, and he has been the the technical, uh, I mean, kind of, uh, I mean, an answer to everything that is uh, N1M2M. Currently, he is involved in testing framework and certification, and uh, has been doing extremely good work there. So, without further ado, I would request Laurent to uh, please start his presentation and uh, give us an idea that how a country like India, which has adopted uh, 1M2M, would uh, have a testing framework that can help uh, proliferation of uh, 1M2M deployments across the country. So over to you, Laurent. Thank you, Rindam. Thank you for this kind of presentation. Um, yeah, can, can I share my screen? Uh, can you give me the presenter rights, please? Uh, sir, given you. Okay, can you see the screen now? Go to the next slide that will clarify whether we are able to see that or not. Slide number two. Is it okay? Full screen, is it okay? Now go to slide number two because slide number one is a banner perhaps. Ah, yeah. Okay, yeah. This one. Can can you see yeah, full screen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can see full screen. Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, let's start. Uh, so, go, good afternoon to all of you. My, my name is Laurent Velez, and I, I work at uh, ETSI, the European Telecommunication Standard Institute. Uh, I'm involved in the Secretariat of 1M2M, providing technical support to the working group. So, I've been asked to present uh, you the, the 1M2M testing activities, the framework, uh, and I would say more in general, the, the TDE working group activities. I will so also give you some information on the certificate certification program even if i'm not directly involved but i can i can provide you some information so uh, you, you saw these slides uh, already several times uh, during this workshop but uh, i will just uh, talk to you about the tde working group which is the bottom right the, the testing and developer ecosystem uh, one of these tasks is the validation of the testing so what do we mean by validation and testing uh, indeed, these two steps uh, come together with the standard specification work. Uh, the, all the, 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 the standardization body uh, could have these two steps. It's about making sure the standard do the right things and they do it right. They do it the right way. So the, the do the right thing is verified by what we call the validation or interoperability testing. And how to do it right is made possible by the conformance testing. So I will try to explain the difference between these two steps and how important are the conformance and the interoperability testing in 1M2M. So usually these two testing activities are, are, are used by the industry in their development processes. Uh, it could be used by third party certification. I would say in a minute uh, about this program. Uh, but what is important is the scope, the development, and the review is done by 1M2M Working Group TD. So that means we keep, in 1M2M, we keep the control of the test specification of our standard. It's a way for us to ensure the quality of the testing. And it's a very important uh, activity for us. Uh, so first, let's say a bit an important part of our work, which is the conformance testing. So. Uh, uh, the conformance testing is the, let's say we call, call it black box, black box testing. It's uh, the testing is done by stimulation and response. So it, it really concentrates on the specific component in the system, uh, often related to a single uh, single standard or a set of standard. But it's really we keep what we we test one component in the system. I would say it's unit testing rather than system testing. It's really focus. Uh, it's applied over 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 uh, open interface, accessible interface, and um, we check the conformance to the requirement which is in the the, the base standard. Uh, 
the normative part. So they are executed in a control uh, way using a test system, and uh, it's very accurate. As I said, this focus is very accurate. The scope is a bit limited because you can have a very high confidence on the key component of the device and, and if the key component are correctly implemented. It may be less relevant for a large system because there are several components. But um, let's say it's, it's an important part. Uh, the interoperability testing, the second part, uh, it's concentrated on the system. It's system testing rather than unit testing, the opposite of the conformance. It's, uh, it's commonly applied end-to-end -end testing. It's, uh, I mean, it's functional. It shows from the user point of view that the functionality is accomplished. It doesn't say how it is done. It say at least it's it say on the function point of view the the, the 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 feature is done the functionality is accomplished it's completely different than the conformance but both are very complementary and both are important uh, it may happen that the products could happen to be interoperable but not conformant for instance if uh, two products have incorrectly implemented the specification the, the same way they may talk each other in interop, but they are not conformant because they are incorrectly implemented. It could also happen that the product are conformant, but not interoperable. Uh, for instance, it's more when the specification is at, at the early stage, when the specification is ambiguous. For instance, if uh, in the standard it is said the value to be sent could be zero or one, if the product a is designed to send always zero is conformant to the specification. If the product B is designed to, to receive only one, is also conformant to the specification, but both products will never able to communicate each other. So this is, you know, you can be conformant and not interoperable. Um, so as I say, interrupt testing is more appropriate when the standard is in development phases. Uh, it helps to, to validate the standards. And when the standard is more mature, then we need to more focus on the, the product itself, not the standard. So the conformance testing is more appropriate for stable specification. And, and to check how the, if the standard is correctly implemented in the product itself. Uh, in, I give an example of the, the process of conformance testing because it's part of the framework. We, in 1M2M, we have adopted the very well-known uh, uh, methodology uh, defined by ISO uh, 9646, a very well known and well proven that adopted by uh, OMA, 3GPP, etc. and other. So uh, we have adopted this process. This is uh, the diagram show the different steps and the different document. I, I will not enter too much in detail, but just explaining a bit the framework that we use. Uh, we have the base standard, the, the TS1, TS4, TS3 for security and other. So we have the base standards. We extract the requirement, every shall in, in, the, in the, 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 the normative part, every requirement. We extract that to create the, the TP, the test purpose. Test purpose is a kind of, a, it's a, in prose, it's a describing of a test that tests one element, one requirement in, in, in each, in the standard. Uh, so it's pretty well, uh, you can read it, it's uh, self-described and it's uh, very accurate. Uh, it says you, you test one requirement. The, the, the TSS is the test suite, uh, I explained test suite structure. It, it's a way to, to sort, to, 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 to sort the, the, the TPs in, in the document, depending some criteria, error condition or order by features, etc. So this is the first document, TSS and TPs, that we produce. Then we convert the test purpose, the prose, the description part into code. In, in this, what we call the ATS. ATL is script, is the, the test suite, abstract test suite, is the, the, the suite uh, the, that can be run in any test system. So it is the, the, the software part, I would say. Uh, in 1M2M, we chose the TTCN3 language. Uh, I will talk in a minute about this. Uh, so this is the test suite that will be compiled to be executed, all the test cases. We have also the ICS, the Implementation Conformance Statement. It's an important document. Sometimes it's X, sometimes it's called PICS, which is the Protocol Implementation Conformance Statement. It's a kind of checklist with the different features of the standards. 
and it helps the user to, to tick uh, the feature that he, he, he support in his implementation and then uh, to, to run the test. If a CAC doesn't support semantics, it doesn't make sense to run the testing about semantics. So it's just a, a checkbox. But it's also an important document that we provide to, to, uh, for uh, running the test. And we have also the exit here, which is uh, the implementation extra information for testing. It's some uh, uh, other additional parameter that is uh, important for the test system, like a timer, like the IP address of the implementation on the test, this kind of stuff. And all this, uh, when the software is compiled, it creates the, the ETS and uh, the executable uh, test suite that combined with the test system is doing the, the testing, the conformance testing on the IoT implementation on the test. A few words about the TTCN3. I mentioned that we, we choose the TTCN3. Uh, so it's important to have a standardized language. Uh, we choose this one because it's a very, uh, in, it's an international recognized standard. Uh, it has been applied in uh, many organizations. 3GPP is using for the, the 4G and 5G uh, conformance on user equipment, uh, OMA, ITS, uh, Intelligent Transport System is using it. So it's very well known. Uh, the strengths of this first, it, it, first is the standard. And the second thing is it's independent of the platform. It's independent of the tools that you use. It's independent of the specific uh, implementation on the test or the, even the interface. That means that the same test suite can be run anywhere. Uh, you, you don't have to adapt it. Only the test system, there is a, a layer that adapts to the protocol binding, but the, test, the same test can be run uh, whatever the, the product. Be for instance, if you have a product that implements way 2 m and it goes to Wi-Fi, it goes to any other protocol, to Ethernet, a a even to uh, co-op, or it doesn't matter because what we test is the standard. And the standard in this case is 1 m 2 m So we test, it's the same test can be run if you use co-op, HTTP, WebSocket, uh, Wi-Fi, uh, Bluetooth, whatever. At least what we test is the standard that we it's one into m. So it's independent of the, the 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 implementation or the protocol, etc. That means it's very important for certification. It's important that we have the same test suite can be run in any test tool in any uh, underlying protocol because for certification it's uh, it's important that the same test is run everywhere. Um, as I said, it's a very well known. So we, we tested it, this one. Uh, this is the, the main specification that we have for, um, for uh, TDE. I mean, some of them. So we have, of course, the TS15, which is the testing framework, very important, based on ISO, as I said, 9646. Uh, you, can diff, you can find all the acronym and test that, uh, and term that I, I just explained. We have an interoperability testing, uh, TS13, which is the interop testing. We have the conformance, the, the PIX, TS, TSNTP, and ATS that I just mentioned. We have also uh, product profile. We have a lot of developer guide, uh, and we have eight at the moment, but more, more to come. Uh, we have API guide. So TDE is active not only on testing, but also for developer ecosystem. Uh, after all, you can ask, why spending time for, for one implement to, to validate the standards? It's very important for any standardization organization because it, it reveals a lot of problem in the standards. And, and uh, so we can fix it and improve the quality of the standard. It's very important tool for that. Uh, we know that the validated standard give a higher chance of interoperable product, obviously. And, and the, the, the manufacturer, the vendors, the operator are confident to get to go to the market if they have an interoperable product. And also, it can, the, the validating standard can provide an opportunity to correct error in a control manner. Uh, we always say late fix in the product cycle are very expensive comparing the early ones. So, so there are several ways to, to validate a standard, as I say, interop testing. But the most practical and cost effective is the interop event. I would say that because I personally been involved in the in seven interop events that we organized in 1M2M. Uh, so it was co-organized by a TTA and NHC, but it's under the umbrella of 1M2M. Um, we did seven, I'd say six physical worldwide, and the latest in November 2020 was a virtual one. Uh, 
uh, they are free of charge, open to one and two uh, companies or a member or non-members as soon as you have an implementation to test. It's covered by the NDA, so the no results are published, only the overall statistics. Uh, and the most important, it's we always give an important technical feedback to the one m 2 m So we, we each time we 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 discover uh, bugs in the standard or, or something that need to be clarified. Sometimes it's not a bug, but it, if it's ambiguous, that means that it need to be clarified. And we have improved. We did a lot of change requests each time, and I think it's a very well appreciated by one m 2 m It's part of the process, as I say, the process for developing a standard to improve it continuously by some uh, checking, uh, some testing. I hope we will be we will be able to do all, again physical one. I, I will be more than happy to do one in India, uh, seeing the, the growing uh, interest of uh, Indian company. Uh, so I, I will be happy to do that when the situation, of course, will be safe uh, worldwide and when we will all be able to travel. Uh, otherwise, it's still possible to do virtual one when you have Indian company. CDOT has participated to most of the, the, the event. Orindan can maybe confirm that it's helpful. He came to, CDOT came several times, so uh, I hope they, they find it uh, useful, but uh, maybe it's something we can ask for in them after. Here, what it is an interop event. Uh, here, this one is in Japan. We You, you see a lot of engineers in the room testing for a week their product. Uh, we organize a parallel session of uh, interrupt testing and unconformance, we do both. Uh, for instance, one company A uh, tests for three hours with company B, and then the session after they test with company C. And at the end, if we multiply the combination, uh, the company are, are confident to that it's interruptible or not, but uh, at least they can debug, and it's very uh, a good atmosphere. So very helpful I, I think always uh, popular to, to go to interrupt event i will go quickly to this one certification program as i say i'm not oops sorry uh certification i'm not directly involved but in fact one m2m is not directly involved as you, you see you have two streams you have the one m2m process that you 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 saw that uh, the organization that you saw there several times and you have the certification body uh, which is uh, separated because one in two m doesn't provide itself the certification. One in two m provides the testing specification that are used by any third party to run the certification program. Uh, it's the same model as 3GPP. Uh, in 3GPP, the RAN5, uh, the testing group, is producing the test suite that are run by the labs uh, accredited by GCF in this case. So. We don't do it, but we have a strong uh, uh, interest and we have a strong uh, focus on the test specification that are, are, are run. Um, some background history, one in 2 has been founded uh, in 2012, but in 2015, we released the, the, the release one was published and there was an urgent and strong need of certification from the Korean market. Uh, one in two M has been adopted by the Korea national uh, as a national standard. There were the three main operators launched uh, commercial uh, product, commercial uh, deployment of one in two M. Big city uh, were also launching smart city program. So uh, it was an urgent need. And TTA, uh, one of the founder of uh, one in two M, uh, became the first certification uh, body to answer to this urgent need. Uh, so they certify product with a certification program, and then they, they when when we need when it was a need to go to become global, TTS transfers its certification program to GCF, uh, but while keeping a, um, a regional uh, role in GCF for, for Korea. So if you don't know, GCF is a non-for-profit membership-driven organization uh, that promotes mobile and IoT device certification program uh, globally. Uh, more than 300 uh, member company. Uh, I, I put some link. You can have the, the one and the one for one and two. In uh, 2019, they, they launched the release one certification program uh, following the one of uh, TTA. The release two is is is, uh, is supposed to is underway. It's targeted for mid 2020. So 2021, we are now mid. I'm sure it is, uh, I, I don't know, to be honest, if it's launched already or if it's uh, with the COVID, it's a bit uh, tricky at the moment, but it's it's uh, very soon that will be done. And the working, uh, the really three 
work items are created in 1M2M uh, and in, in, uh, in the GCF, so that will be also underway. I think really three and four are created in GCF also. So, uh, the program is open to GCF member and non-member. Uh, they have two kinds of certification. They have the, the part of the device certification with all the, the different protocols, different standards, and they have also as a standalone certification. Uh, as, as I said, we are not involved, but at least we provide all the specifications. So as you see, it's not only conformance, like in uh, 3GPP uh, user recruitment, it's also interop. So we provide the TS13 and the, the pack of uh, conformance uh, testing. Uh, so we provide that. Uh, we have also added two documents, which is the feature catalog. It's a summary of the one implement function and the profile, the product profile. Uh, we, we, we do, it's easier for the, the, the certification. It's what we do. So, uh, just for in your information, I will not enter in detail. It was the one in time certification program for release one, uh, as you say, uh, as you see, uh, interop and conformance testing. Uh, put some information because uh, I am not involved, but you may have some uh, question on that. So you better that you contact themselves. So they are GCF as the recognized test organization for one in two M. It's TTA, of course. For Korea, they have also DECRA, which is a Spanish uh, uh, company. But the, the one that are involved, it's uh, in one in two M. It's the, the Japanese. So DECRA in Japan. This is for Interop. Um, you, you see uh, uh, TS thirteen. Uh, for conformance is TTA and also uh, GCF, uh, um, sorry, uh, SGS uh, North America, the, uh, the, the recognized test organization. But as I say, uh, TTA has still uh, uh, an important role in GCF, so they are what they call the third party assessment capable entity, ACE, which has a, a role, it's the kind of key contact point. Uh, to, to be able to determine the range of uh, the tests required for certification and also to assess the result. So they have an important role in GCF. They still keep an important role. Uh, I, I listed the, from last time I checked, it was a 33 certified product in, from, from more than 20 companies. Uh, some of them has been done by TTA and after 19, some of them have been done by GCF itself. You have the link if you want to see. Important is the contact names. Uh, for If you have question on the TDE working group, you have the chair, Andrew, and vice chair, Bob, that has, the Bob that, that has um, presented a few minutes ago, Bob Flynn. Uh, for the conformance testing, if you have specific question, you, you can contact Miguel Angel. And uh, for the one in term certification, the best is that you contact ASIF, which is in the boss of the certification program in one in 2 m and Kiboom, which is from TTA, and is a, has a role of being the relation between GCF and, and 1M2M. I, I think I'm running out of time, so I will not go too much time. I put some slide on the developer because it's also an important task of the TDE about the developer ecosystem. So you can list, we have a lot of developer guides, uh, as I mentioned, uh, so they are all available. Uh, there are, uh, you will have for information the developer resource. We put a lot of tutorial. Uh, there are a lot of information on the Hackster also, some mini project that you, if you want to know more, you can start by building a small IoT project. We have teaching material. We put online the video, uh, advanced training on 1M2M, let's say uh, two days of advanced training. Uh, our friend from Hyderabad University also created a very uh, important uh, MOOC where you, you, you can learn 1M2M. We, we did semantic tutorial, the, the part one and part two will be soon. So there are a lot of information. And we do also a lot of hackathon developer events. Uh, I just listed it for your information. I think we did more than 10 in hackath uh, hackathon in, in, in India, physical hackathon. Uh, to be honest, I stopped counting after 10, but probably we did more. Uh, it was always a pleasure to, to, to be in India for doing this. A lot of enthusiasts, as you see, I think this one was in Hyderabad. So. Thank you very much. Sorry to have been a bit long, but uh, if you have any question or you can contact me, no problem. So I give the floor to Orindam. Thank you, Orindam. Thank you, Laurent. Thanks a lot. It was a very elaborate presentation, but uh, people are still very thirsty to know because I could see some people raising questions in the chat box. Ah. Well, some may be answered. So thanks once again, Laurent. It's always a pleasure listening to you. So. Thank you. Uh, so here uh, we